senior ladies intercounty footballer Carla Rowe uh, to look ahead to the All Ireland uh, senior uh, senior championship in the ladies football and campaign. I suppose, um, Carla, first of all, uh, 2020 uh, a sort of an eerie sort of season, and um, what has it been like uh, since uh, the start of the lockdown in March in Dublin? I suppose there have been an awful lot of uh, ladies' clubs in Dublin, uh, ladies' football clubs, I imagine that. So was there much uh, action played uh, throughout, the, throughout the lockdown when the club scene uh, got back on its toll? Yeah, I think um, over the lockdown, once club got back, I, I know for myself anyway, we were we were flat out with club games week in, week out, every Wednesday. And for personally, that was very beneficial for me. Over the lockdown, our club did up a programme. So we were training kind of by ourselves through the gym and yoga and online Zoom sessions three days a week. So when we got back to matches, although it takes a few weeks to get the touch back into game pace, but... Um, fitness wise we were we were happy where we were at and then having games week in week out before going back to county was hugely beneficial as well I suppose uh, Carla I'm just doing a bit of research in terms of your club you come from a club right on the border a sort of a small club I don't know if you're a, a dual club or, or or your status is but I suppose given your Dublin inter-county career if I, I think you're on your seventh year now with the Dublin senior ladies uh, uh, three yeah. you've won a You've won three All Irelands and lost three finals, and this is the the seventh year. But I suppose in the last two or three years, I suppose how professionals uh, professionalism, uh, the term the term the lady senior game has become. I suppose you would be with the Dublin senior ladies probably two three times a week, and probably with your own club team might only be available for matches and probably interacting with the young girls coming up, the minors or the girls just breaking onto the club scene. You probably won't get to train with them very often or probably get, get to familiarise yourself or get to see some of those games or get to interact with them uh, as well. So how beneficial was that for you to get back to your roots, get back to your club, uh, go training with the young 17, 18 year old girls in your club, getting to know them a, a good bit more, spending a bit of time with them and nurturing them uh, coming through and uh, getting back to where it all began? Yeah, it was it was brilliant and it was something that personally I know I, I enjoy it. like I really enjoyed being back with the club and um with us here we're from a small a small village in North County Dublin where you know everyone in the village and mm. everyone who's in the club as well and on our team we'd be very close friends um inside f football and outside football so being able to get back to that and spend time with the girls and be able to train full time three nights a week was was fantastic. It's brilliant for me because one, you're not just getting in for championship matches where you haven't gelled well with the team and they haven't gelled well with you being back, but you have time to work on um, our game plays as a team as a whole. And then for, as you said, for young players coming up this year, we saw a huge increase in our young girls coming, coming up week four or five coming forward. So it was a big thing to be able to have um, that time spent with them to you know, when, when county players and senior players come in, it can be quite intimidating for young girls. So mm. to have it that, um, I suppose, I, I'm, we're not that intimidating and not that scary coming in training that uh, they, they're having a laugh with us. And we were able to, when we go to training on a Friday night after matches, we could relax and kind of have that um, the lighter session and have a chat, have a laugh and get to know each other. And then come Monday and Wednesday for our games, we were able to be intense. You're not just being put in the Monday night before championship matches where you have to be tuned in. So you really get that bit of personal time, which was hugely um, enjoyable and beneficial for the team. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Carla, in terms of Dublin, we've seen uh, Dublin has got hit very bad in terms of the coronavirus, probably itself and Donegal. I suppose in, in terms of that, it's probably made... Um, in terms of an inter-county setup, I know Mick Bohan's involved in which, which he's probably made that bit in terms of travel and uh, communication and facilities. Obviously, with, with the, you have to be extra careful given the high numbers in Dublin as well. Has it made it that bit more awkward? I know uh, down we're, we're here based in Clare, I suppose, uh, 
obviously it, it made it's, it's much smaller county in terms of getting from A to B uh, in terms of club wise and there probably wouldn't be that sort of uh, distractions in terms of restrictions and all that how's, how's it been like in terms of uh, since you arrived back the first night back with the Dublin uh, senior in, in, inter-county ladies or do you, did you arrive back later given the restrictions um, I think the first day we were allowed to go back was September 14th. I think that was the first. So mm. um, obviously with everything going on in Dublin, yeah, we were we were back either the 14th or the next day after that. So um, compile, like complying to all the regulations here in Dublin is obviously very important, much like the rest of the country. Um, it's a little bit more awkward in, in terms of um, carpooling, going across Dublin and driving after a day's work. And you might have had only driven one day a week where you had two or three girls in the car with you and you could take turns um, that we've cut that a good bit that if possible people are driving by themselves and if not you've obviously to wear your masks in the car so for my situation it's I'm driving up and down by myself four nights a week so that can be a little bit more difficult but otherwise it's it's good to be back training it's good to be back with the team and um, to be hopefully still looking forward to a championship going ahead now in a couple of weeks. And I suppose, uh, Carla, just going back to the previous question, uh, you experienced a sort of uh, split season in terms of uh, league and sort of the championship. Would that be something you'd be advocating going forward, maybe to have that uh, time, that championship time with your club after the league and maybe a later start to an inter-county uh, season going forward? Do you think that has been one of the things that maybe has come out of this whole COVID-19 situation for you that maybe to have maybe that month or in the calendar to go uh, interrupted uh, with your club mates would be something that you would be advocating uh, going forward? Yeah, that probably is something, um, especially I would have always loved to be able to be full-time with our club kind of um, at certain times of the year. But after this year from learning, I'd definitely be advocating for that. I suppose it's hard with the calendar and um, mm. I wouldn't want to be extending the season. So we're playing in December like we are going to be this year. I know it's obviously <laughs> um, circumstances have changed, but um, the I don't know whether you could shorten the league maybe and have it mm. more of a, a, a group stage and then give give that time then to club for a month block where you're not with county. I do think a lot of the girls would, would love that. And I'm sure that's across the rest of the country, like, you know, mm. the the Corks and the Mayos, they all have superb club teams there and uh, they definitely appreciate more time with their clubs. But I suppose it's just, we all know how hard calendar fixtures are. So it's it's the logistics of, of that point on it. And I suppose, uh, Carla, in terms of um, your preparations now going back, um, obviously, given the restrictions, as we mentioned, uh, on Dublin uh, on Dublin as well. How's it been like to in, in terms of inter-county challenge matches? I'm not going to ask who you played, but have you managed to go to, for teams to come up to you or travel outside of the county since you've been back to get inter-county games? Obviously, people will look at Dublin and they probably say, well, the, given the COVID situation in Dublin, they probably say we might uh, look for challenges nearer home. How's it been for you to get challenge inter-county games? Yeah, well, challenges are so important, especially with such a short calendar year. Do you know, we came back September and in a month's time, we're going again into championship. So we are very lucky that our in-house games against ourselves are are so high paced that sometimes um, we're able to get brilliant feedback and learnings from our in-house games. So mm. week in, week out, we've been doing a lot of that, which has been hugely beneficial to us. And, you know, every county panel will tell you that the the start and 15 are important but what's coming behind is what makes a winning team so mm. being able to have those games against each other and be constantly pushing each other and swapping positions and um, no one's secure in a starting team and um, we're lucky that we do have that in our in our bag behind us. And I suppose uh, Carla in terms of uh, another thing that has really uh, involved uh, the, Gaelic, the Gaelic ladies football scene in the last few years, the amount of girls uh, getting uh, professional uh, contracts in relation to Australia and Aussie rules. Uh, it's up on 18 or 19. Uh, I've just in terms of, has an opportunity come knocking on your door in the past one or two years to venture uh, over to Australia or has it came, came to pass for you uh, already or is it something, if an offer did come, that you, you'd find intriguing? 
Um, yeah, late, like as in late September last year, I got a phone call, but it just wasn't the, with the All-Ireland final coming up, it just wasn't the place for my head to be at that time of year. Mm. Um, so I, I had to just leave that one aside. It is definitely something I would look into in the future. Um, mm. I'm back in college now for the next two years, so it wouldn't be something in this time but uh, I think yeah it's not something I, it's definitely not something I would close the door on it's a great experience to have and uh, fantastic to be able to go and travel while doing sport so mm. um, yeah something I'd consider. Yeah and I suppose uh, Carla in terms of uh, the seven years now on the inter-county uh, Dublin scene I suppose the professionalism is in, in terms of uh, in nature I suppose this is going to be a long sort of campaign you mentioned you're in college studies as well does it does it give to any time to demands now in terms of uh, fatigue in terms of a social life in terms of that sort of aspect as well is it pretty draining um it's not getting back as being great because obviously a lot of people were get finding it very difficult to train by themselves so i think it kind of gave us that new aspect of appreciating being training as a group and yeah. um, what i do think is difficult is just that winter side of things you know and mm. um, use of the dressing rooms is minimal and um, so trying to do prep work before training is obviously out on the pitch and before matches the weather is not great in Ireland from uh, September to December. So parts like that on a day where maybe you're already feeling tired and feeling a bit ran down, that can be draining, but everyone is in the same situation. So I suppose we just need to, to pick ourselves up and get on with it. Yeah, and I suppose uh, last question before I bring you on to the championship. Uh, Mick Bohan uh, involved with Chi. We know him very well down in here, here in Clare. He uh, coached the Clare uh, senior footballers uh, under uh, Colum Collins sort of guidance. I suppose Mick, a real sort of uh, passionate uh, uh, a coach in terms of uh, Gaelic football, a very advocate of using both feet and both hands and a, two, uh, a ball in each hand and a ball in each foot would be sort of mixed motto uh, in terms of that. I suppose in terms of his uh, professionalism that he's brought to the Dublin ladies football team, I, I suppose you can only look at it in terms of the success and amount he won and how integral is uh, Mick uh, in terms of this uh, setup? Do you have a professional setup but if Mick Bohan was to leave uh, to uh, tomorrow morning God, uh, in terms of not being able to do would it be a big massive loss or would you be able to con continue on without his guidance oh well obviously it would be a, an enormous loss like you yeah. know no one wants to lose a manager that, that that's that good and puts so much time and effort into the team and um, you know he goes above and beyond for for us as a setup individually and as team um, players so definitely would be a loss so mm. he better not be going anywhere and um, <laughs> But yeah, like, as I said, uh, with Mick there, as you pointed out yourself, the skills side of our game has just gone up and constantly increased over the last three years, you know, and those little things are what get you over the line at the end of the day. And he's he looks at the finer details of the sport and makes sure that we're constantly improving as players and that we're constantly pushing ourselves to improve all the skills and not just be a good forward or a good defender and be good on your right foot that everyone defenders forwards goalkeepers are constantly um striving to to try and achieve as many skills of the game as possible i suppose carla i'll bring you on now to the what you came here to talk about uh the ladies uh, gaelic football uh, championship you're in with uh donegal and waterford in uh, group three just a quick rundown with the groups group one kerry cabin and cork Group 2, Tipperary, Galway, Monaghan. Group 3, Dublin, Donegal and Waterford. And Group 4, Tyrone, Armagh and Mayo. And the winners of Group 1 uh, will face the winners of Group 2. And the winners of your group will face the winners of Tyrone, Armagh and Mayo. And I suppose uh, in terms of fixtures, you're up the first round against uh, Donegal. Then on the November 14th to 15th, you have Waterford. If you're successful in those two, you've abide in on the final round. So uh, in terms of that, it's a three three game three team group. If you're successful and you top your group, you're playing the semi final on the on November the 28th and 29th, and with the final then if successful on December the 20th. I suppose, um, Carla. I suppose in terms of that group, uh, Donegal and Waterford. I suppose um, all form. Does this is a sort of they call this the COVID championship because all league form goes out the window because. 
no one knows where everyone's at. Uh, I suppose summer football is very different to winter football. Different game plans, different styles will suit different teams given the conditions. I suppose Donegal got one over you at the start of the year as a bit of a surprise, but that's obviously gone out the window. I don't know if that's still uh, still on your mind at this stage. It's probably a different championship. Waterford uh, coming in Munster football in the last few years. Um, their their growth has been coming at, uh, coming at a rapid rate. So in terms of you probably start as favourites in the group, uh, uh, being your your much va- va- vaunted success. But given that it is a championship, there's no form to go on. There's no consistency to go on. There's no league to go on. It is a, a championship where everyone has sort of fancied their chances in terms of the underdog uh, taking a David versus Goliath sort of scenario. It really evens the sort of playing field. So take someone at your pearl at this championship in the first game and it's you're up against it the second game and then you could be packing your packing your bags and mightn't even get a third game. Yeah, exactly. As you said it there, the, the door is wide open, I think, this year. You know, it's it's a different year for everyone, and some some teams uh, prefer winter football, some teams prefer summer and dry football. So it's it's definitely wide open there this year. But um, it's it's just going to be different. Uh, Donegal and Waterford are two fantastic teams, and as you said, Donegal um, bet us there in the league. And yes, you can use you can use the league in ways, and then you have to not think too much of it. So we won't be thinking too much of the the loss, but we'd be looking at what we can improve from that day, what we can learn about Johnny Gall from that day, even though things may change. Um, mm. But that's all you can go by, really, because nobody knows where, in the first round, no team in the country is going to know where their opposing uh, team is. Like, you know, fitness-wise, skills-wise, nobody is going to be seeing, oh, well, there was a game last weekend and we watched Tony Gall and they did quite well. So um, it will be difficult the first game. And we just have to make sure that the two games, you're, the first game you're going out, you're you're ready to go. There isn't room for error this year. Mm. You need to be um, not not taking any gains for granted and making sure that once you go onto the pitch, you're you're going at 100, 100 miles an hour and getting ready, hopefully, for a win. And I suppose, Carla, in, ver- in very essence, it is really championship football. It is really knockout football. There's that sort of an edge to these games because given your first game is against uh, Donegal, if you win that, the second game, you win it, you're true. Lose the first game and you're depending on Waterford to do you a favour uh, in terms of that. So the scenario is, uh, if the destiny is in your own path and if you don't take it, I suppose, it falls on to someone else to, to do you a favour and that's probably a boat no, no team in the country wants to be in this year. Yeah, we don't want to be leaving our fate in, and, and no team wants to be leaving their fate in any other um, match or team's performance. So uh, we, uh, we'll be aiming to go out and have a good performance against Donegal and hopefully come out with a win, which which may be said easily, but it will not be done easily. You know, they're they're a, a fantastic team with what, which, with what I think is some of the best forwards in the country, you know. Mm. Um, and they're they're threatening on on any given day. Um, never mind a day where they hit, hit their form well. So we have to make sure we're ready, we're prepared, we're training well, and uh, we're come the thirty first of October, we're ready to go to championship pace football. I suppose, uh, Carla, if you are successful, uh, the bonus is obviously that you have that bit of a break uh, towards the semi final if you top the group. Obviously, you can look at it a bit as a hindrance as well, because if you're playing a team, say, in the other group uh, that's playing on the last round, round three of fixtures, obviously, they'll be coming off a, a sort of a win and a momentum, and they probably have a, a bit of less uh, time. They'll probably have a game uh, more competitively in there. So you'll probably have a bigger uh, window to try and manage. And obviously, with the current COVID situation as well, the possibility of trying to get an inter-county challenge in between that uh, after round two, between that semi-final, I, I imagine it'll be next to impossible. So you will be depending on your in-house sort of training games, I, I assume. So in hindsight, to have that bit of a break going into the semi-final, it can work for you, that sort of bit of a layoff. But obviously, if a team that comes through group four, obviously, if they're playing in the round three fixture, they'll have, they'll have that bit of match uh, uh, sharpness uh, in terms of 
going into the semi-final, obviously, if you're successful, because they will have played your game more recently than you have. Yeah, I'm, I haven't looked too far ahead of our first game, so I'm not um, fully aware of our schedule, but I'm sure it's either like a two-week or a three-week break in between them. Mm. Um, the only thing with us, I suppose, the positive that we can take out of the Leinster Championship, we haven't had one there for a while, and... There's been a big gap in weeks between June when other clubs like Mon- or other count- um, provinces like Munster and Ulster and Connacht, they'd be playing off a very strong province uh, championship, whereas we would have had big gaps. So um, we, we, we know how to deal with that, that bit of a gap there. So we won't let that um, get to us too much or, or think, think beyond our first game for now anyway. And if it comes to that, hopefully... We, we'll deal with that as it comes. Um, but as you said, our in-house games and our training can be very competitive. So um, we'll, we'll work with that if, if the time comes, hopefully. I suppose, Carla, in terms of Christmas, I suppose, uh, in terms of everyone wants to Santi uh, to come and deliver a pres- present under the Christmas tree. And uh, Santa, it will be ho- Carla Rose household, they're hoping Santa will be coming on uh, maybe uh, four days earlier uh, f- uh, on December the, the, the 20th uh, this year in terms of another All-Ireland. And I suppose that week up, if you dare, I suppose that will be sort of, you could have snow on a Monday on the ground and stuff like that. And you'll be, say- you'll be coming uh, home from school and you'll be saying, it's the week of Christmas and... Here I am starting to get getting ready for an All Ireland final in terms of wrapping presents and getting the Christmas turkey and stuff like that. It's going to be an awful sort of a, a weird sort of scenario, but I suppose a different sort of uh, Christmas sort of vibe to it as well uh, if it comes off for you. Yeah, I suppose. I think the championship will probably go down in the history books there, and it'll be one that we look back at and laugh that we were, um, our teams, hopefully us as well, will be playing in an All-Ireland final five days, as you said, before yeah. Christmas Day. So it is something that's uh, crazy to think of. But look, we just have to we just have to be thankful that there is something there and um, that we're, we're healthy enough and well enough to be able to take part in it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll remember it definitely anyway. Yeah. I suppose, uh, Carla Rowe, uh, pleasure talking to you this evening and our feature looking ahead to ladies at uh, inter-county uh, football action. Uh, best of luck. Hopefully, please God, there is a championship for you and uh, no doubt, uh, whatever the story, uh, Dublin will be in the mix uh, for contention and honours, I suppose. You've uh, drawn the straw of uh, 3-1, uh, 3 loss, so you'll be looking to get that um, uh, final goal to, for a 4-3 sort of victory. Uh, Carla, thanks a million and take care. Thanks for having me, Jim. It's been a pleasure and best of luck. Cheers. Thank you, Carla.